Today the plan is to turn abstracts or mark making that are really lovely and easy into lovely little decorations to either hang on the tree or to give us presents or for you to sell. And if you give me a week or so I shall put a link up and it'll link to my website so you can buy kits to do this. Um, I hope you enjoy. They're lovely and simple to make and they're nice and hard wearing as well. Oh, the thing I think I didn't mention on my video is that at the end of it I just glaze them with a acrylic medium, a glazing medium, to give them some extra strength. I hope you enjoy. Please remember to like and subscribe um, if you don't mind me asking. And I hope you enjoy it. All the best. Thanks for watching. So I've been making some lovely Christmas decorations out of the abstracts that I do. In the idea of the abstracts because they just make such a nice, easy, simple colouring that's got loads of gesture, loads of movement. And I also wanted to hang some contemporary art on the Christmas tree. So that's what these are. And it is made out of any card. But this card is sort of cuttable. It's fairly easy to use and it, when it's glued together it makes these lovely pretty firm things. So that was one way of doing it. I actually stuck two of them, two painted abstracts together back to back and I cut that with a scalpel blade but it, it's pretty hard, it's quite difficult to do. So if you do it in two halves and then stick them together and what I did was once they were stuck together I put them beneath a book so that they were weighted down. As you can see, I just do a nice sort of general abstract on there, um, nice bits of mark making. So that's just with acrylic paint. In order to the abstract, I just decide on the sort of colours I want. And in this one, this case, I want a red one. And I really just want it almost all red. I just want it to be very Christmas red, and I'll probably put some gold on it or something. So I just bung the colour on and then I want it really rich, this one. And of course the lovely acrylic is very plastic based so it finishes it with this really very plastic finish, doesn't it? It becomes so durable because of the acrylic. It ends it up in this lovely, deep, rich plastic coating really. So I'd probably let that dry and then I'm going to add some darks to it. Okay, so I've got the first layer of the abstract and then I'm just going to start adding some really nice bonkers colours. All in the reds because I'm just going to keep it nice and Christmassy. I mean, it's just a question of really enjoying it, isn't it? My idea was to sort of use some of the methods that I've been showing you before and you can sort of try different ways of mark making on it. It's just really for fun, isn't it? Enjoy. This is a lovely colour, a very sort of bright red. And as you can see, I'm really going for it. You know, I'm, I, I want it to have unusual mark making and unusual colours on it. I want it to be predominantly earthy abstracts. God, I just love doing this. It's just, these are really old paints and I do need to actually use them up so I can be pretty ridiculously extreme with them. You know, generous. I love this fluorescent orange on it as well. Get some more of that onto it. Just seems to lift it like mad. red on there too. That pink's nice too in parts. So let's just get some in. And that, that you know, fantastic mark making. And then on top of all this you could just glaze it in a very deep red with a acrylic glazing medium. So I mean that is about it. I still want a few more marks.
I would have left it as it was had it just been an abstract, but I want it for the stars, don't I? So each area has to have some sort of point of interest. The light's going in the studio and I can't see some, but that's really nice and extremely thick. Might just flatten some of those ones out. So I'll do that side, then the other, and then cut the stars out. So I made a star and a Christmas tree template. I'm just going to quickly show you how I just do it. And it's perfectly simple with the uh, scissors. So I'll just draw around it. And again, because you're rubbing, once you glue it up, you rub the paint onto the edges. So your pencil mark isn't going to show. And I quite like it sort of hand drawn. I'm not doing it too precisely because generally that's how I do things in any case. So I just made a template out of paper and as you can see it's a pretty rough line. I'm not that fussy about it and I mean I know I'm going to do tons of these. I'm going to try and get as many as I can out of this piece of paper and I'll just do two for a start. And you'll see when I glue it together, um, you'll see that it, it, when you trim it, you just get rid of anything that doesn't quite match up. Okay, I'll get this one out. And if you cut this one as a thin, as a single layer, it's so much easier. I've got to be really careful because I want that. I'm going to need that to put the next one in, aren't I? So that one would go there. Well, I'm easily going to do that. So I'm not, don't have to worry too much about this. I'm just going to cut that off so that I can just show you how I quickly cut, how I cut them. And that it is perfectly possible with this stuff. And then you keep, I keep all the bits because they will make really nice other little bits and pieces. All the collage is going to be so nice. And in fact, I'm going to make some more things with it all and show you them. So we're going to make these decorations, but... I'm also going to make some really nice little presents with them and I'll show you afterwards. And look at all these beautiful spare bits. And you've got all these lovely bits left behind. And you can of course just buy wooden Christmas trees with even a hole in the top. They're so cheap, these laser cut things, Christmas decoration things, and paint them. Um, I'm going to cut this one out first because I want to just make sure the bottoms match up and not be too flippant with cutting out the bottoms. And even if anything you tear doesn't matter, it really is yet another very forgiving method. has to be for me to be able to do it. So that should match up with that, you see, or enough. Cut that away so that it matches. And anything that doesn't, trim afterwards. You see, again, it, nothing's precise, which is so nice. I'll glue this together and let them settle, and then I'm gonna trim it. And I just use a good quality wood glue. Just get my wood glue and a brush, cover it all with glue, and again, doesn't matter if it's messy and then I'll put these between a book or between books and what you can do is put some cellophane between it so that they definitely it doesn't stick I mean I put two bits of card on over them put two bits of mount card and then I just keep checking it for the first half an hour just to make sure that you know that I haven't put so much glue on that it's gonna stick to the card or you can just leave it like that it goes very tacky at some point and then it sticks. So you can just keep it beside you and just make sure it's going down. In any case, there's your little Christmas. And I'll put more decorations on that and some gold and silver bit speckles. And you've got a lovely little Christmas decoration. Once you've made your Christmas tree, you just, just drag bits of your silver and your red across and that's it. That's really it. I'll just trim the edges and put the green on and then add some actual metal rather than the paint. And I, th I think the, the thing to do is just to keep it fairly abstract. Again, try not to 
worry about your mark making because it just seems to come out in the wash, doesn't it? They seem to be fine. Okay, there you go. And again, so I make, I've got a little star template and I cut them out and then I glue the two sides together, trim them off and you're left with something like this with, obviously these are the two, that one doesn't open but there's one that opens. And then to finish off the edge, it's amazingly simple, you just use a colour that you've used within the design and paint the edges. Whoops, a daisy. Because in fact, it can be wiped off. So even if you've got it on your actual design at the front, because it's a, an abstract, it doesn't really matter. You can just wipe it off. It's really good because it's a very simple process. So you just wipe it on and then get a damp cloth and you can wipe it all off afterwards. You just use a colour that's complementary or, you know, used within your design in the first place. So this one was green, I used blue on the blue ones. And of course the plasticiness of the acrylics seals it really well as well. So, so you can see, I don't have to be careful. I've got hardly any of this left, it's dried out because I went off for lunch in between. Okay, so really use the plastic of the acrylic to seal it as well. And then you can just get cloth with a bit of water on it and just wipe it off the edges. And because it's a nice general look, you know, design, it's not neat and tidy and precise. It all just, you know, amalgamates in. It works really well with these. I've got loads of stars like that. I'm just going to put that to one side to dry. Get this out of the way. With these blue ones, I've added this aluminium builder's tape, and it's dead easy. It's difficult if you think you're going to have to cut out the shapes, stick them on, because it, it's difficult because it's very sticky and it sort of rolls back on itself. But if you just pop it down and and hold it and pull it, you get these nice little um, torn marks. And because the tape is sticky backed, um, it sticks down really well. And there's a couple of things, I'm, there's some gold that I've ordered and some copper as well. That's, I think it's a slug repellent, it's used as a slug repellent. Um, but I will put them in the links below. So they work really nicely. And I'm going to put gold on these ones. The sticky back foil stuff that you can buy is really easy but you can actually go all out and get some actual gilding stuff which is also dead easy I mean, we've been using this for other things so i've probably got some bits and bats i think that's actual gold leaf so i won't use that but these aren't expensive these are foil you know uh, these are I don't know what they are quite, I'll have to look it up. We've got these ages ago. Oh, but look, aren't they gorgeous? So you could just put that on. So I've got some acrylic mediums, a mat, and I'm just going to use that as the glue. And then all these will have to be sealed. If you've used this stuff, they'll have to be sealed. I do actually quite want a, a shiny finish on it, so I don't mind sealing them after. It's sort of the way it breaks up as well is in keeping with the rest of the design because it just goes into these lovely sort of very organic forms. So those will do. I put it to one side. Yeah, there, there's one open, and I've got some ribbon, so I would either just make a loop, cut it off, and stick it inside, so you've got that what, that way, or I'm actually getting some little um, pendant binings, some pendant bales, and I'm going to put fix them on, and then put a ribbon through it, so that would finish that off, so that's dead easy, so either you glue it between the two sheets, or you, or you just simply glue the ribbon between the two sheets and you can put bows and all the rest of it. 
so there's the two methods of finishing it off. There's the little rope thing that I showed you, the little, if you just put the ribbon in between the two pieces, or there's these lovely little jewellery finings. They're called pendant bales, and you just open them up, decide which point they're going on. So I'm going to do five, so make the mark prep with the actual thing. So there. Okay. Which just leaves enough space and everything. Then make a hole through. Do it just a bit higher. So it goes through really easily actually. So I've made a hole through it. And then all you have to do is bung the fining in the pendant bale, put the little uh, pin, pins into the holes and there you go and it's lovely and finish it off with a little ribbon. I did have a box full of ribbons and of course the studio is so full at the moment and also I tidied it up which is like a curse isn't it? Some of you tidy stuff up you can't find a thing. In any case just get a piece of ribbon and all all the same length so I'd cut five and just thread them through. I will probably somehow seal the end but I'm not and look how they're cute and then just tie them so make it so length that'll go over a Christmas tree arm and then tie it. I mean, the best thing to seal this off with, so is a little knot. So you've got that, and then I think what I'll do, I'm just going to put a bit of gloss medium at the end of those, just so that it doesn't fray anymore. And then it'll just hang on a Christmas tree. And you've got a set of six, a set of five, or individual ones. So from all your bits and pieces, you end up with a whole series of nice little decorations you can either give as gifts or you can sell them. Um, it's up to you. So from a piece of card that you do a very simple abstract on, you get these rather lovely tactile contemporary tree decorations. Enjoy! Thanks for watching and hope to see you again.